the next topic I'm going to discuss would be the management prerogative to promote. What is promotion? In our understanding, the promotion refers to increase in responsibilities, advancement from one position to another, and correspondingly, under the old ruling of the Supreme Court, there is increase in compensation and benefits in Miliaris versus Subido. However, in the recent and succeeding rulings of the Supreme Court, promotion does not mean salary increase already. In the case of PTNT versus Court of Appeals, September 29, 2003. So, if you will be asked in the bar examination, does promotion carry with it salary increase? The answer is no. According to the Supreme Court, salary increase is only incidental. ECO 2000 Commercial Corporation et al. versus Obrero Filipino ECO 2000 Chapter et al. July, uh, January 11, 2016. So the next question regarding promotion would be, can the employee refuse promotion? According to Supreme Court, yes, because there is no one that is compelled by law to refuse a gift because promotion is like the nature of a gift. So you cannot compel an employee to accept a gift. So that is the essence of promotion and I think it's not a very popular source of question in the bar examination but just in case there will be a question asked on promotion I think it will be on the salary increase so it is not a necessary consequence it is only incidental let's go to the right of management to demote when is there demotion <clears throat> if we look at jurisprudence we can say that there are two kinds of demotion. One, demotion as a result of transfer. And the other one is demotion as a result of penalty. There is demotion as a result of transfer when there is a reduction in position, rank, or salary. So the first kind of demotion is that it is a result of an invalid transfer. So in that case, if there is an invalid transfer, then the employee is placed under constructive dismissal. So the employee can file an illegal dismissal case. Now what is very attractive for bar examiners would be the demotion as a result of penalty. In the case of Florin Hotel versus NLRC, May 6, 2005, when the Supreme Court required that in the exercise of management prerogative to demote an employee, the essential elements of due process must be must be observed. What is this? The twin notice requirement. First, you have to notify the employee on why the employee should be demoted as a form of penalty then the employee will reply if you're not satisfied with the answer of the employee then you send a notice of demotion that is the landmark case of Florin Hotel versus NLRC so if demotion also as a form of penalty was done invalidly, meaning there was no basis for the penalty, the employee did not really commit the offense, then it will also result to constructive dismissal. Illegal demotion will lead to constructive dismissal because the employee here will resign because the employee will feel uh, that the environment has become hostile the employer makes the life of the employee difficult so take note of the two kinds of demotion so either of the two can be a good source of bar examination but I think the second one would be the most attractive why because there is the application of due process
Now let's go to the management prerogative to transfer employee. Since there is no vested right to of the employee to the position that he or she is holding, because such is still subject to law, general principles of fairly and justice and CBA. That's the case of Mendoza vs. Royal Bank of Lukban, July 7, 2004. So therefore, management can transfer an employee. One. In the case of Placido vs. Placido Urbanis vs. Court of Appeals, November 25, 2004, in this case, the Supreme Court laid down the requisites of valid transfer. One, there must be no demotion or diminution of benefit. Okay, so we already discussed demotion. When you say diminution of benefit, we are talking of Article 100 of the Labor Code. The other requisite would be transfer is not unreasonable, inconvenient, and prejudicial to the employee. Third, it is not a facade to get rid of the employee. So if transfer is valid, of course, the rule requires that the employee has the burden of proof to refute the, the, uh, the allegation otherwise alleged by the employee. So if the exercise of management prerogative to transfer is valid, then it will be upheld by the court. Now what will be the effect if the employee will refuse a valid transfer? So the employee can be terminated based on just cause. What is that just cause? Willful disobedience. So to distinguish if if it is a valid exercise of management prerogative to transfer and the employee refuses without any valid reason the employee can be terminated based on willful disobedience. You have the case of San Miguel Corporation versus Angel Pontillas, May 7, 2008. If the exercise of management prerogative is invalid because it resulted to demotion or diminution of benefit, making the transfer inconvenient, or it is a facade to get rid of the employee, then the case will now be considered constructive dismissal. So the employee will resign and file an illegal dismissal case. But I think there was a question in bar examination on transfer. I forgot how it was crafted, but if I am the examiner, then the question will be about invalid transfer. So if it is an invalid transfer, there is another principle that is applicable, constructive dismissal. When you say refusal of the employee to comply the order of transfer, a valid transfer, when you say a valid reason, the Supreme Court has ruled that even family is not a basis to refuse a valid transfer. You have the case of Indico versus Quantum Food Distribution Center, January 30, 2009. So, I think that's all about transfer. And, uh, there's so much. There's no much question. I think when you talk of transfer, just remember the point no? when it is validly exercised and the employee will refuse. There's a ground for termination. If it is not validly exercised, it will lead also to constructive dismissal. Another prerogative of the employer would be to discipline its employees. This is an inherent right of management to discipline because you know you cannot compel an undesirable to, to retain an undesirable employee. So when you discipline an employee, let's start with the basic rule. First, you have, what is your basis for the disciplining, the act of disciplining an employee? Then you must have your company code of discipline. Your code of discipline or your pa company policy and discipline must be reasonable, must be lawful. And more importantly, the penalty must be commensurate to the offense. Otherwise, if it is not commensurate to the offense, then dismissal will not be upheld and the list that the court will impose would be suspension. So instead of terminating an employee and your company policy is unreasonable, then the court will have to tamper or temper 
the, the scale of justice and impose only suspension. We have to remember no, that, that the livelihood of the employee is the most important thing. You dismiss the employee, then you make four or five people go hungry. So according to the basic rule laid down by the Supreme Court in different cases, termination is the option of last recourse. Whenever the employee has committed an infraction, according to the Supreme Court, a penalty less punitive may so and a penalty less punitive may suffice. Then, according to the Supreme Court, whatever missteps may be committed by labor ought not to be visited with the consequences severe. Universal Rubina Sugar Milling Corporation versus Ablai et al. March 16, 2016. Let's go to the management prerogative to operate and manage its business. The Supreme Court recognized this in the case of Pixon versus Robinson Supermarket Corporation in June, July 3, 2013. And another prerogative of management would be to dismiss an employee. So the way how I discuss it in my class is I give a separate meeting because that will be all about termination of employment we will devote more time on that as of now i will stop this video clip to finish management prerogatives so all in all i have discussed to you the management prerogatives to hire to promote demote discipline transfer etc. So I hope that you are enlightened and you can answer questions in the bar examination and my students can also answer.